My name is Jim Campbell. I'm the lead pastor here at Bay West Church, and I'd like to thank you for joining us and being a part of our service this morning, whether this is months after this is actually aired or this is the weekend uh, that this happened. You know, no matter where you are, listen to what I say. God planned for you to be listening right now, so God has something to say to you. It may not be directly through something of the teaching. It may not be through a lyric of the song, or it might be. But God is speaking to you, so listen up and hear what he has to say. You know, if you're not a part of a church in Palm Bay, and you live in the Palm Bay area, we, are, we would love to have you join us. We are actually meeting in person at 1115 on Sundays right now at 100 Emerson Drive, Northwest, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. And we would invite you to come be a part of that. We are having Kid Zone right now where we do have uh, some, some limited kids activities. We're taking some precautions because of the virus and stuff and, and, and COVID. We're still in that, that mode right now. If you're listening to this months later and we're past it, praise the Lord, it'd be great. But right now we're taking, com- we're taking some, you know, con- some, um, some uh, precautions with that you know, and, and how we structure. But pretty much for you, it's the same thing. If your child is sick or showing symptoms, stay home. If they're not, come on in. We're going to take care You're welcome to wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. We socially distance and things are fine. So it, that's totally up to you. But we'd love to have you be a part of our services on Sunday. Uh, if you're not in a life group, Life groups are small group Bible studies that meet throughout the week. And what they allow for that you don't see as much on Sunday is kind of interaction. Now, this is where you share your life with other people, and they pray for you, and you pray for them. And, and you t- share what God's teaching you, and, and, and they share what God's teaching them. And together you go, well, you know, maybe it's this. And you kind of learn in that kind of uh, interchange atmosphere. You could be a part of a life group by going to baywestchurch.com forward slash groups. And there's a find a group there. You can click that button and it shows the groups that we have available. Uh, If you would like to give your tithes and offerings, we make that opportunity for obedience available to you. You can give securely online at baywestchurch.com forward slash give. Or if you're a check person, you can mail it to 100 Emerson Drive Northwest, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. And we'll take care of it from there. but right now, what I'd like to do is just, I'm going to turn it over to Josue Gomez and our worship team to lead us in some worship. So to put this on the biggest screen you have, you know, it, put it on the loudest music place you have and sing aloud with it. If you've got a little screen and some headphones, no worries, put the headphones in, turn it up, and just experience what God has for you. <music>
Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. You promise me. at preparing the new year. 2020 has been quite a year this year, a lot of difficulties and trials for different people. Uh, we remember years based on things that happened during the particular years uh, around us. We often think about 1776, the year our nation was founded. Uh, many people remember 1948 when Israel became a nation after 2,000 years. Or 9-11 is a date that people remember, September the 11th with the terrorist attack in New York with 3,000 people killed almost. And so 2020 has been one of those years that we tend to remember. And we remember it because of the worldwide virus that has struck the world. It's called COVID-19. COVID stands for Corona Virus Disease. But 19 stands for 2019. Although the virus was not recognized till about the end of 2019, 2020 has really been the year that's been devastated in America and other nations of the world. It's had a, a worldwide effect on us. Uh, family members have lost health. Uh, they've lost their lives. They've lost their jobs, finances, uh, many difficulties within families. Uh, there's been many divorces attributed to the virus. But also businesses have had difficulties too. Many businesses have gone under or suffered great loss and continued to do so because of the uh, ramifications of this virus. Also, schools have really changed. So schools have gone, uh, in many cases, viral. It's interesting. I, I did some study on this, and if you look at the word viral, it can mean a virus, but it also can mean an online class. So it's kind of interesting that this uh, virus has moved us into online classes in many schools. But 2020 has been difficult, has been challenging for many people in America and different places of the world. So because of that, the question often comes up now is, what will 2021 be like? What will it be like this new year that we're about to embrace? Will it be better? Will it be worse? Will it be different? And, and we don't know, I don't know, what 2021 will be like. Uh, no one really does except the Lord. And He knows exactly what's going to happen in 2021 and how to prepare for that year. But when we think about difficulties as a believer in Christ, as we grow in Christ, as we learn to live for Him and serve Him, uh, a verse often comes to our heart, comes to our mind. It's Romans 8:28. And the Apostle Paul stated it this way, We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His 
purpose. So God has a purpose even in the difficulties of life. And this will motivate the believer to be more faithful to Christ in everything that we do, everything that we say, our objectives in life. We love him and follow him because we begin to learn that things come into our life that we would not choose. Things happen and we don't understand why. We don't see the purpose behind it. But as we're faithful to Christ, we begin to say, Oh, okay, I see what God was doing through that situation and how he uses it for his honor and his glory when we are truly faithful uh, with him and faithful doing things that he calls us to do. So as we think about preparing for 2021, I would encourage us this morning to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, Jesus tells us that in Matthew chapter 6. It, you know, it's interesting that he didn't say, now make sure you have food and clothing. And then, by the way, seek first the kingdom. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and the things that we need in life, whether food or clothing or other things, will be provided for us. So God is faithful to provide all that we need as we make first his kingdom. So as we prepare for 2021, we should really prepare for the kingdom of God. Uh, we shouldn't say, well, I need to get ready for 2021 and then I hope the kingdom of God falls into place in regard to my life. In actuality, we would say, I'm going to prepare for the kingdom of God. I'm going to live in the kingdom of God. And then 2021, what will happen will happen. But we know that all things will work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. So sometimes there's a difference between preparing for the things of life as we see them, as we want them, and preparing for the kingdom of God and what God's doing in our lives, how he's leading us and directing us in life. I'm reminded of a verse from James chapter 4, verse 13 and 16. Here James says, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow. We shall go to such and such a city and spend a year and there engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So James is saying that we really need to live for the Lord above everything else. And then what needs to fall into place will fall into place. What needs to happen will be happened. It will be right and it will be correct in regard to the kingdom of God. Now, it's easy to get caught up in preparing for the things of the world, things from our perspective, how we see them, instead of preparing for the kingdom and how God sees things. But that's what I want to challenge us to do today. And I want to use a, a, a parable from Luke 16. We'll get there in just a moment about how the world prepares for certain things and how we as God's children should prepare for certain things in regard to the kingdom. So first, let's look at the idea of preparing for our eternal destiny. It's easy to be caught up in the world and not think about our eternal destiny, our time in heaven, but just to think about now, what do I need to do today and uh, how to make a living in this life? But uh, we are going to heaven, and I hope that you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ are consciously, spiritually aware that you will go to heaven. That you will stand in the presence of Christ. We'll have a glorified body. We will be there with him. So really the way to prepare for the things of this life. Is to ultimately prepare for that day. When we will stand before Christ. And we will give an account of our lives. Jesus in John 14. Made this promise to his followers. In verse 2 and 3, he said, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So we will be in heaven. We're assured of that. But we have a life to live on this earth in anticipation of going to heaven. Now, when we get there, the scripture is very clear in different locations, different places in 2 Corinthians 5, but I want to use Romans 14, 12, which simply says, So then, each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. When we get to heaven, we will give an account to God for how we have lived, his, lived this life in relationship to the kingdom of God, not to the things of this world and its fallenness and its alienation from God. So in the parable, it's quite a parable as we look at it in Luke 16, but Jesus is going to compare the managers or stewards of this world with those who are managers or stewards of the kingdom of God. Actually, we are stewards, we're managers for God's kingdom in this world. We have been given gifts. We have responsibilities that we're accountable for. And we will give an account for every aspect of our life in heaven. So Jesus uses this parable to tell us there's a sense where the people of the world, the unsaved, are in a sense more accountable to their managers than the kingdom of God. We as God's children are accountable to him as our Lord. And it's easy to get these two confused or to run them together, but Jesus is going to make a distinction here in Luke chapter 16. Let's begin with verse 1 and 2. Now, Jesus was also saying to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward or a manager, and his steward was reported to him as squandering his possessions. This steward was squandering his master's possessions, spending money, we'll say, on things to profit himself and not his master. Verse 2, And he called this steward or manager and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. In other words, the steward or the manager or the CEO was saying, You're fired. Your, your job with me is over. Now, give an account of the things that I've entrusted to you on your way out the door because you're no longer a manager, a steward for me. Now, similarly, what Jesus is implying here is there's a day when we will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. We're managers of all that he has given us. We are stewards and we're to use these things responsibly and accountably uh, for him. Uh, you know, we don't have anything that Christ has not given us. Paul expressed it this way in 1 Corinthians 7, 4. What do you have that you did not receive? So everything that you have, everything that I have, is something we have received. We brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of this world but what we receive we receive from God and we are stewards we're managers of what he's given us to use for his kingdom for his glory when you receive Christ when I receive Christ I move from this world system as a motivating dominating force in my life to the kingdom of God and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ now he's given us many resources and many blessings he's given us time we're to redeem the time, use it for his honor. He's giving us energy to do things in life, money, possessions, gifts, talents, skills, friends, a church family, a home family. And, and all these things are blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And one day in heaven, you and I will give an account for how we have been using these resources. How we have been blessed with what God's given us, but how we've used it for his kingdom and his honor and his glory. We will give an account. We are his managers. We are his stewards. Now, as believers in Christ, we need to be 
completely focused on this day in heaven. It is your destiny to stand before Christ in heaven and give an account. It is my destiny. It is a reality. When we think about 2021, I, I don't know about you, but I really have trouble nailing down any realities for next year. I can't. But I can nail down realities for God's kingdom as he leads, directs, and guides because he perfectly knows the future. He knows everything that's going to happen, and there's a sense where he allows it happen to happen even when it's something that we would never choose. And that's why we go back to the verse that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Now, in the parable, Jesus is comparing the stewards or the managers of this world who are focused simply on the things of this world uh, without any recognition of the kingdom of God. But he's comparing them with us who do have an awareness of the kingdom of God, who do live in the kingdom of, the kingdom of God, and have been given these resources, time, money, friends, different things, energy, to use for his honor and for his purpose. Now, we're, we're to prepare for this eternal destiny. And I assure you that as you and I prepare for this eternal destiny, we will make every preparation that we need to make for 2021. It is there. Now, but we do need to be careful. We need to be uh, cautious in what we do uh, for the kingdom. A few weeks ago, Kathy, my wife and I, we had been quarantined. We were tired of being home, uh, tired of arguing with each other. But uh, uh, so we decided we were going to go away to St. Simon's Island for a few weeks. That's up in Georgia, out from Jekyll Island, just a, a few hours above Jacksonville, Florida. But it's a nice little island that Kathy and I like to go to occasionally. Usually we like to go once a year, just get away, take our bicycles, ride, uh, enjoy the beach, enjoy the pier, enjoy the area, and have some time of rest. Now, any time that I go somewhere uh, out of town, uh, I have a, a checklist in my computer or on my phone. I call it my checklist. Now, on that list are things that I want to prepare for before going out of town. Uh, there's things that I want to put in my suitcase, whether it's clothes, shampoo, uh, hair dryer, whatever it is. On that checklist is everything that needs to go in my suitcase. Also on that checklist are other things uh, to take, uh, like a computer, my telephone, uh, bicycles. Uh, that checklist has everything that I might need to take on a trip. On the checklist are things that I need to do before I leave uh, around the house. Is the heat and air set at the right temperature? Are the security cameras turned on? Is the house alarm turned on? Is the sprinkler systems set for the way that they should be set? All these things are set. So before I go out of town, but anywhere, I go to this checklist and go through every item on it, trying to verify, okay, I've got this, I've got that, I've got that. Because when I go out of town, especially on a vacation, I don't want to be concerned about something at the house. I don't want to get uh, to my destination and say, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I didn't bring the bicycles, you know, or whatever. So I try to be real careful. And a few years ago, uh, several years ago, Kath and I went to St. Simon's Island. And I got there and we got in a hotel and I was unpacking my suitcase. And somehow on my checklist, I had overlooked my underwear. I'd forgotten to bring underwear. So here we are on a vacation in a beautiful island with a lot of things to do. And we have to take time and go to a store and buy underwear. It, it really wasn't a pleasant experience. Somehow I've overlooked that. And uh, for several years after that, Kathy would, uh, when we would go out of town uh, and I'd have my suitcase packed, she would ask me, did you put underwear in your suitcase? So the point is that we need, you know, we're careful of the things of the world but we need to be more careful of the things of the kingdom of God than the things of this world because we have an appointed destiny to stand before Christ and give an account of our lives. 
our resources, our blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Now, I might encourage you to have a spiritual checklist. I have one. I didn't count the items, but there's probably over 100 items on it. It's things on my computer or phone. And occasionally I go through this lengthy checklist that's reminding me about things of the Lord, the things of the kingdom, to make sure that my life is in alignment with him and what he's doing. So, again, to prepare for 2021, I would encourage us as believers in Christ to prepare for eternity. And God will take care of the details as we seek first his kingdom. So we're making this preparation, but we want to use our resources wisely. And that's what Jesus is communicating in, in this parable. He's going to say that the people of this world use their resources, their wisdom, their possessions more wisely than the children of God in anticipation of the kingdom of God. And so let's begin with again with verse 3 of the parable of the steward where uh, the, the steward has been fired. He's been terminated. He's going to have to give an account of the possessions of his master. And then in verse 3, And the steward said to himself, He's been fired. What shall I do since my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they will receive me into their homes. He's not going to have a place to live, so he needs, he needs someone to receive him for a place to live. So verse 5, And he summoned each one of his master's debtors, and he began saying to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly and write 50. And then he said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write 80. And his master, when he found out what he did, his boss, his manager, his master praised the unrighteous steward because he had acted shrewdly. And then Jesus makes this astounding remark. For the sons of this age, speaking of the unsaved of the world, are more shrewd or wiser in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. Huh. So Jesus is basically saying the people in the world know how to live for what they want and to obtain. But the children of the kingdom, we're not as wise as they are and obtaining what we should be obtaining in relationship with our Lord. In verse 9, And I say to you, uh, Jesus said, Make friends for yourselves by means of the mammon of unrighteousness. In other words, the things of this world are considered unrighteous because they are not a part of the kingdom of God. So money not used for God's kingdom is unrighteous money. Uh, that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. So there's an astounding perspective here that Jesus is making. This guy has been terminated, and he says, you know, I'm not strong enough to dig to make a living, and I'm ashamed to beg. So I'm going to go to these people uh, that I'm a steward of, and he deals with me. He says, you owe 100 uh, measures of oil. Well, he says, take your bill and give me 50. You owe 100 uh, measures of wheat. Well, make it 80. So these people that he was dealing with, that he was handling for his master, said, hey, you are, hey, you're great. I appreciate what you're doing. Now, so when you're terminated, you come live with us. You have blessed us. So you come stay with us and we will take care of you. We'll give you a place to live and everything will be fine. So this is an unrighteous thing that he's doing even from a worldly perspective, but Jesus is praising him for taking care of himself. He's recognizing his destiny without a job, without a home, without the pleasures of this life. And he says, no, wait a minute. I want a home. I want 
pleasures in this life. So if I do this, I can obtain this objective, these objectives for me. So Jesus is saying that we as the children of God, we need to make preparations for our destiny, for where we're headed in heaven. Uh, not just being there, but to act wisely and shrewdly in what we have been given. Again, we've been given money. We've been given possessions, homes sometimes, family, church family, talents, skills, gifts. These things are all to be used for God's glory. Now, when we use them for God's glory in relationship to other people, other people will come and become interested in us like these people that uh, got the discount from this steward became interested in him. And they will enter the kingdom of God. So we're preparing a place uh, for these people through unrighteous means as, as far as the money is concerned in the world in their life that they will be in heaven with us. And we will be together for eternity. So Jesus is saying, let's learn a lesson from this unrighteous steward. Let's prepare to be in heaven with people around us as they enter into relationship with God, as we use money and resources and things that we have to encourage them to enter the kingdom of God. We can be a blessing to them. I think about sometimes, you know, where we live uh, we have some neighbors that are just super. I mean, they will, they will stop in the middle of the road and come to our health, house and help us and do things, and we will help them. Now, they're not saved, some of them. But we have an ongoing working relationship with the things of this world that I hope will bring them into the kingdom of God, and we will have a place to live together in heaven with the pleasures and the joy of God. Uh, as we look at verse 9 again, another translation reads this way. Here's the lesson, the translation says. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. In other words, we're going to be in heaven together with these people the unrighteous ones who come to faith in Christ, using our resources wisely as stewards of God. Gary Enrig tells a story about a man that was shipwrecked on an island. And uh, he didn't know what to do. He was lonely. It was an unknown island. But to his surprise, he found out that he was not alone. There was a tribe of people that shared this remote island with him. And to his pleasure they began to recognize him in a very significant way. They took him and set him on a, a throne and made him the king of their island. They would, whatever he wanted, he, they, would, he, they would provide for him. Food, clothing. He was the master of this island. And he was somewhat perplexed. I mean, why would these people... Treat me this way. I've been shipwrecked. I, I'm here. I'm lost. Uh, I don't know what to do. And they're treating me as their king. So a little bit as time went on, he began to learn some of the language and was able to communicate with the people. And he made a stark discovery. They had a custom on this island that uh, uh, once a year, someone was selected to be the king of the island. Now, that's the good part. <laughs> the negative part, at the end of that year, that person was shipped off on a small boat to an island in a distance that was remote, that was truly abandoned. And at the end of the year, after being king and getting all that you want, you would go to this island and you would live there and die there without housing, without food, without shelter, and those things that needed for life. So he, he was distressed. He said, now, it's great being king, but at the end of this year, they're going to put me on this boat, take me to this island, abandon me. So he began to think, okay, now what can I do? Now, now catch the point here that uh, they're making in the story. 
that uh, he's realizing what his ultimate destiny will be in this world, a remote island. So he begins to think, and he says, no, wait a minute. I'm going to this island. I know I'm going. So what can I do? That's my destination. He began to make preparation. So he commanded those around him. He said, okay, I'm king. You go to this island and you build a real nice house for me. You go to this island, till the soil, plant gardens and vineyards for food. You go to this island and prepare other places for my friends. And I want my friends, you are my friends, you're, I, I've enjoyed our relationship on this island, you are to go to that island and live. So you see what he was doing. He says, okay, this is my destiny. This is where I'm going. I'm going to go there and have nothing. So I'm going to go there and have a blessed life. So when the end of the year came, he got on the boat, was taken to the island. But there was a luxurious house that he could live in. Garden, food to eat, friends. And everything that he could want was on that island because he recognized his destiny and prepared for it. So again, the, the point that Jesus is making is that, is that we need to determine our destiny and make preparations for it appropriately as people in the world determine their destiny or perceived destinies and make preparations for them. So this is what we're to do in relationship to the kingdom of God. Uh, we are to understand that we will give an account and that God's going to bless us richly in heaven. 1 Corinthians 3 tells us that, speaks of this accountability time where one, some are going to be richly blessed, but others are going to have nothing as far as eternal blessing except you are in heaven. You have you've received salvation, but you're there without any inheritance because you have not lived for the kingdom of God. So Jesus is trying to motivate us to be prepared. Now, the difficulty sometimes or usually all the time, basically, in preparing for uh, eternity is we can conclude, can conclude that as I prepare for this life, as I do things right in this life, that I'm doing things right in the kingdom of God. But really, there's a stark distinction. There's a difference between the two. So as believers in Christ, we need to have discernment. We need to understand regarding our resources, how to use these for the kingdom of God, even as we deal with unrighteous people and their unrighteous ways. We're making preparation for our ultimate destiny uh, in heaven with the Lord. So, but again, the thinking often today within the context of Christianity is that, well, if things are going good in this life, God must be pleased with me. Uh, if I'm having all that I need, I must be doing what I need to be doing. But really, we're making a wrong assumption there because when we live for the kingdom of God, simply because we're living for the kingdom of God, Things are not going to go well. You know you're living for the kingdom of God when you suffer difficulties, trials, and persecution for using your God-given resources for his kingdom. Things will not go well. Uh, you know, Paul made this statement, yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So it's easy to conclude as a Christian, if I'm being blessed financially, if I'm being blessed with friends, if I'm being blessed with this, things are go, everything's well. So we confuse the worldly aspect of being a steward with the kingdom of God and being a steward for him. Let me give you an illustration of that. We've just coming through our Christmas season. And uh, when we think about Christmas, we often think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. But, and she was greatly blessed of the Lord. Uh, you remember the account, I think Pastor Jim shared uh, last week or so. An angel of heaven greeted her before Jesus was conceived in her womb. And the angel told her this in Luke 1, 28. The angel from the Lord from heaven said, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women. So Mary uh, obviously was one of the most blessed people in the world in relationship to the kingdom of God. But being blessed in the kingdom does not necessarily mean blessed in the things of this world. Uh, you remember the life of Mary. She was with child, but had not had relationships with her husband Joseph, her husband-to-be. Now, that can be an uncomfortable situation. It certainly was for Joseph. Now, she's highly favored and blessed for the Lord. Uh, she had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem uh, for the government, for census, for taxes. And, and, and we assume that she rode on a donkey for about 90 miles while pregnant. Now, uh, that in some ways doesn't sound very blessed. Another thing is that when she got there, you would say, well, she's blessed to the Lord. When she gets there, she's going to get a room at the Holiday Inn. No, when she got there, there was no room in the inn, and she had to go to the stable. Now, the point I'm trying to make with this, and, and the baby was born in a manger. The point I'm trying to make is because we are living for the kingdom of God and stewards of all he's blessed us with does not mean that things in this world are going to go like we want them to go. They're going to go contrary to what we would choose. Uh, Mary and Joseph uh, had the child Jesus and had to flee to Egypt to avoid persecution because they were living for the kingdom of God. Herod was ki trying to kill baby Jesus. Think about this. Mary had baby Jesus and flew to Egypt. Herod, in trying to kill her child, slew many children around Bethlehem. Some people say perhaps hundreds of children aged two and under were killed, male children, because he was trying to kill baby Jesus. Now, how would that make you feel to be in that situation? But we're getting a glimpse of the world and its unrighteousness being exposed as sometimes it is. But uh, Mary was highly favored and blessed to the Lord. Being highly favored and blessed for the Lord, she observed her son being crucified on a cross. Now, we can conclude that's not being blessed to the Lord. But again, God does things and brings things into our lives that we don't understand at the time, but he's working through them for a way that will truly bless us in what we need in this life but ultimately blessed in eternity beyond our comprehension. We cannot comprehend. There's no way to even imagine how blessed we will be if we are good stewards of the kingdom of God when we leave this world. Mary went on even after the death of Jesus and was there in the book of Acts when the church and believers were being persecuted. Yet she was blessed and highly favored of the Lord. So don't confuse being blessed in this world and being blessed in the kingdom of God. There is a strong distinction between the two. So daily, we're to use our resources, I'll say it again, for God's glory in relationship with Him. Our time, our talent, our skills, our gifts, our, our family, church family, all that we have, we are stewards and we're living things out for God's glory in all that we do. Now, uh, we don't have to be shrewd or wise in the things of the world. Sometimes I realize how unshrewd I am in the things of the world. Uh, last week or week before last, I <clears throat> had a chainsaw that I bought, used. It was a gas-powered chainsaw to cut some limbs around the house. And uh, I wanted to to trim up things and make them look nice. So I fired up the chainsaw, it fired up, I took it out to use it, and it wouldn't cut a limb. It just would not cut a limb, even a small limb. So I said, well, something's wrong with it. Let me fix it. It looks okay to me. I'll try to fix it. So uh, I got a, a blade. Well, I downloaded a manual for the saw, got the appropriate blade, and sharpened the blade on the saw and uh, made sure the tension was right on the chain, got it all fixed up, took it back out, and began to saw a small blade to test it, thinking, surely that's fixed it. It would not cut that small blade. So I said, 
okay, maybe I don't have the blade sharp. So I resharpen the blade. Same thing happened again. It would not cut a small limb. <clears throat> so I said, I cannot figure this out. I'm not smart enough. But then someone told me that very day, uh, out in a store somewhere, I just, someone, I mentioned it, and they said, well, there's a shop down the street here, and they will sharpen your blade or give you a new blade if you need it. I said, sounds what, like what I need to do. So I took the saw in, and uh, the guy said, well, sit up here on the cabinet and let me look at it. So I set the saw on the cabinet, and the man behind the counter looked down at the saw, just a few seconds, and he looked up at me, and he said, the blade's on backward. <laughs> you know, I felt about this big. I said, oh, here I've spent hours working on this thing, and when I bought it, the blade was on backward. So I took it home and reversed the blade where the sharp teeth would cut into the wood and not come the other direction, and the saw works great. It works perfect. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that sometimes we're not shrewd in the things of this world. Sometimes we feel like we're not as smart as we need to be. But I'm trying to say, while we may not be shrewd in the things of this world, we can be shrewd in the things of God's kingdom. And we are called to be shrewd and to use wisdom in all that God has blessed us with in anticipation of that day when we will stand before him and give an account of our lives. Now, finally here, Jesus makes these few statements. <clears throat> Looking at this, we're to serve only one master. We're to serve God. We're to be in relationship with him, uh, being faithful in all that he has us to do. Now, again, if we do that, we're preparing for our eternity with him, but we're also preparing for 2021 as it arrives and we go through this year. Again, I don't know what's going to be in 2021. You don't know, but the Lord does. And as we follow him, he's going to work things out in an appropriate way. But let's look at some, some things that Jesus gives us here in, in, in wrapping up this parable. In verse 10, uh, Jesus said, He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. We're either serving God or we're serving the things of this world. It's easy sometimes as a believer say, Well, this is big, so I'm going to do it. But this is small, so this doesn't matter. But Jesus is saying here that, that to be faithful in the big things we have to be faithful in the small things. Whatever Jesus places on our heart is the right thing to do. Uh, it's not for us to say, well, I know what you want me to do, but I think this would work better. Uh, have you ever done that? I've done that. And, and we shouldn't do that, but we should let him direct us in the small things in life, and he uses those to become big things in relationship to his kingdom. So we're serving only one master. Another illustration, think of Joseph. Now, Joseph finds out that his wife-to-be Mary is with child. And he's not had relations with her. Now, what do you think Joseph should do? Joseph could easily conclude, she has been unfaithful to me. Therefore, we are not going to be married. Joseph could have concluded from a worldly way, and the world in general would have probably agreed with him and said, you don't need to marry her. But Joseph wasn't focused on the world. He was focused on the kingdom. And an angel spoke to him and said, take Mary for your wife. And so Joseph entered in, in this, what we might call a small thing, Joseph entered into playing a role in raising the child Jesus, who was to be the Savior of the world. So small things can make a difference in God's kingdom, and we need to use them wisely as his steward. Now, verse 11, If therefore, Jesus says, you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon, who will entrust the uh, true riches to you? So we're seeking not the riches of this world, world 
but the riches of the kingdom of God. And, and God is saying here, Jesus is saying, listen, if you cannot take care of unrighteous mammon, or translated unrighteous money in the things of this world, why should I entrust to you the things of my kingdom? So we're to be faithful in serving God in the things of this world, and then he will give us the things in his kingdom to serve him. And, and the blessing is that we won't lose. It, how foolish it is to serve this world and the things of this world. And to know that when we leave this world, we can take none of it with us. We brought nothing into this world. We can take nothing out. Isn't it foolish? Wouldn't you consider it foolish to live for something that's ultimately going to be taken away from you? But when we live for the true riches of the kingdom, they will never be taken away. Jesus spoke of giving a disciple uh, of his a drink of water, and he said, you will in no ways, you will in no wise lose your reward. So the small things and being faithful, even in the things of this world, brings great blessing to us. But also in verse 12, here Jesus says, if you have not been faithful in the use of, of that which is another's, who will give you what that which is your own? Now, ultimately, everything belongs to God. All my resources, my time, my energy, everything I have ultimately belongs to God. If I'm not faithful in that, then why should he give me other things in relationship to eternity? So, again, we're serving one master. Again, as is presented to us in verse 13. Jesus, here in closing the parable, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money or mammon. We cannot serve both. We either serve God and his kingdom, or we serve this world. And we need to make a strong distinction because Jesus is saying, listen, you can't serve two masters. It's just not going to happen. Often within the church, the idea is, well, I come to church on Sunday, and I serve God on Sunday. I do this and I do that. But the rest of the week is my time. I can do what I want. And we're confusing the blessings of the kingdom with the blessings of this world and the way that they are sought after. We're to always seek the kingdom of God. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then he will align our lives with his kingdom and the things of this world to fit from his perspective. Now, life's two masters think with me either god is our master or possessions master us we serve god for the possessions of this world our focus is on god and what he's doing or on our possessions we yield ourselves to god or we yield ourselves to the things of this world we think about god or we think about the things that we have in this world primarily we give time energy effort to god or we give our time energy and effort to making things work out from a worldly perspective christ controls our pursuits in the kingdom or else our possessions control our pursuits we can struggle in a right way to be in harmony with god or we can struggle in a negative way to be in harmony with the things of this world we can hold on to god or we can hold on to our possessions we can love God, or we can love our possessions. So in the kingdom, we hate our possessions as to any control that they might have, want to have over us. I think of the verse, I think in uh, Luke 14, where Jesus said, unless you hate your mother, father, brother, sisters, you cannot be my disciple. We're to hate the control that they might have over us in regard to the things of this life as opposed to having God having complete control of our lives and then being the correct blessing to those around us. So we cannot live in both places. Uh, we cannot live for the things of this world and live for the things of the kingdom. We have to make a choice. I have to make a choice every day. Am I going to live for God in his kingdom or am I going to live for this world and what I think I want to do? We make that choice every day. So we want to align ourselves with God's kingdom and our final destiny for there. James tells us 
that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. We cannot be double-minded in regard to our ultimate destiny. So again, we started with Romans 8, 28. Let's look at it again. Paul says, we know that God causes all things, not some things, all things, to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So as we come to the end, I would say to you, if you're listening to this and you've never truly received Christ, you know, we can be a Christian in our head. We can be a Christian in church attendance. We can be a Christian in in service in a lot of ways around the church. But we have to be a servant from the heart through relationship with Christ. If you've never received Christ, I would encourage you to confess him as Lord of your life. And at that very moment, you will enter the kingdom of God. He will give you the resources to serve him and to one day stand with him in heaven and to give an account of what he has blessed you with in this life. I would encourage you to do that. If you say, well, Pastor Steve, I am a believer in Christ. I know that I'm a Christian. I would encourage you to 100% live for the kingdom of God. If you do, I can assure you, you will be making every needed preparation to enter in to 2021. Let's be blessed in the Lord's work. 